So here uh, we go. Here we go. Yeah. So, hello, I'm John Alsop and you are... I'm Alison Watt. I was thinking, I, I was thinking you were going to say Alison Watt Patterson. No, and there then, you go. <laughs> and then, because I only just realised when I was kind of thinking about this, that Alison Watt, Alison Watt Patterson is kind of, um, you could fold it in half, it's balanced around the what. Mm-hmm. It's got rhythm. It has, yes. In oh, fact, if I'd had no what, it was Alison Patterson, I'd be a rhyming couplet. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> but you're Alison what? I'm anyway. Alison what, so it's completely immaterial. No, no, no. Um, right, so um, we're neighbours. Yeah. And in preparing this opening statement, um, I, I, I kind of got it wrong a few times and started to say, I, I, I breastfed your son one time. <laughs> but that's not what happened. <laughs> Me and my partner. <laughs> um, uh, we we uh, babysat your son one time, who is now at university. So yes. that's how long we've known each it other. It is. Well, he's nineteen now at university. So yes, it is quite a long time. And 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 one of the things that that I I don't know whether the the phrase is I'm proud of, but I kind of saw you get the time to go on training courses and there was that phase when you went off on a load of training courses mm-hmm. and then as a result of that you got to write for EastEnders and you wrote a few episodes of EastEnders and now you've got your own theatre company mm-hmm. so I'm kind of I really like that it's a, it's a really <laughs> actually my mum went through the same kind of process after having after you know we were off at school and stuff so um uh, I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know what that leads to, but I kind of wanted to say that. No, well, that that it's nice because the thing is, it you're kind of starting off on a journey. I mean, when the when the babies were small, I mean, certainly when Liam went off to school, that was around about the time that Imogen was born, mm. and it, it she wasn't very old when I actually started doing the East Enders stuff, and that was amazing to actually be able to do all those things at the same time so she was tiny and I was also trying to get my head around how to write soap scripts Mm. Um, and yes I mean in the training I you know went through Soho Theatre Company I did the training with them um, a couple of workshops with them Um, so that's kind of started it started me off on track really so bizarrely, I sort of did more television before I went into theatre. Mm. But then theatre, because I'd acted for such a long time, theatre was always my love, and also it, it was about original work. So inevitably, I was going to go back into mm. rather than go continue to do try and do original work through television. I wanted to go back to theatre, so that's right. kind of where the origins of setting up the theatre company come from, because it gives me the opportunity to have my own theatre laboratory, really. And again. to work with other people on, on ideas. And could you not get a proper job in theatre? A proper job. You know, you just well, well, to hell with it, I'll do it myself. <laughs> proper job in theatre. Are there any proper jobs <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if there are. Um, <laughs> I think I did have proper jobs in theatre, I suppose, if you look at it as a proper job. I mean, I had a commission from Hull Truck Theatre Company. And I had a show, show called Life's a Beach, which oh, yeah. toured nationally with them. Mm-hmm. And I've been commissioned by the Stephen Joseph Theatre. I did a lunchtime show with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the, the the things that... Whilst it's great having a proper job as a writer in theatre, if you're working for another company, then obviously there are elements where you have to um, conform to, I suppose, in a way, the, the expectations of that mm. company. So the, the show that I wrote for Hull Truck, which was a three handers, three women multi-role play it was very mm. much in the style mm. of the sort of work they do and I really really enjoyed doing that but oh, they come seeing it yeah. we went and saw it and it was yeah. it was very good but it, it's one of those things where you think sometimes you need a completely mm. blank sheet of paper to start to kind of to develop ideas completely so that so was, what does that allow you to do what as your what's what's the kind of what is it you're trying to achieve well, I always come at it. We haven't mentioned the name of Beach Hut. Oh, Be- Theatre Beach Hut Theatre Company. This is the so. name of the company. Um, the thing for me, the project always starts with the idea and the writing, because mm-hmm. obviously, although I'm a director, I'm a really I'm a writer director. So the writing is the the idea for the play or the project or whatever is the thing that comes first, mm-hmm. and sometimes that can come from an idea of something I've read or researched. 
uh, or it could come from a theatrical image that I might have in my head mm. and then work backwards from that and think how can I create something around that so for example with the show that we did for Coastival last year Love on It's Brass the idea that came first was that I'd like to do a play that goes over three different locations in the course of one story right. so we started out indoors the second section was in an interior, kind of interior exterior because it was in mm. a multi-storey car park uh, of a local hotel and then the third bit was actually out in the open air so that was the idea that's what came first and then I thought right how can I find a story that is going to work with a kind of strong sort of populist narrative that's going to work over those three locations and that's mm. where the idea of setting it around a wedding came from okay and then you develop from there so sometimes for example the location comes first with the one that I'm working on at the minute um, I wanted to work in the thriller genre I also wanted to write something about dependency so that came more from the sort of research aspect okay. and then we went down the kind of decisions about doing it with multimedia and live music and all those things as coming out of the research aspect these sound a bit kind of almost as if um a little bit driven by technical things rather than driven by you know that you want to that all your plays are about loss or they're all comedies or they're all musicals or they're all about something it, it feels like you're kind of testing yourself against almost just just technical things yeah really. parameters um that's not kind of, I suppose, where I am coming. I suppose You're I take, I take it as read that my plays will have loss in them, right. love in them, the pursuit of a, a personal truth in them, okay. that they will, will have all those elements in them anyway. So, so from my are... point of view as a writer, all those things will automatically always right. come out. I mean, you may make decisions about whether, from a genre point of view, with obviously Love on its Brass, I wanted to write an upfront... Mm. Not quite farcical comedy, but getting that way that was very mechanical in it, the way the plot unfolded and everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is much more, this ha it has much more dramatic elements to it, the one that I'm working on at the minute, which mm -hmm. is still by fast. Um, but yes, I mean, I couldn't say, you know, I only ever want to write a play about love or, mm. or loss or whatever, but... Mm inevitably the human condition comes through in everything that mm. I do because I'm so interested in story really which right. of course means that inevitably relates to the human spirit I mean that's that, that was something I wanted to to ask was obviously you kind of do everything apart from your so you're married to John Patterson so he covers the music side of things he's done the eight born he does, the music and yeah. whatnot so that's that covered um but other than that you you're the ideas you write, you write the play, and then and then you cast and direct, and and probably act in it as well. <laughs> no, not yeah. this time. Not no, this no, time. no, 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 <laughs> no. I have been out to in the pour the though. drinks in the after. Yeah, after it could happen. Party. Yeah, so, I'll, be, I'll be there <laughs> making the copies in the interval. So what? What actually? Well, which which do you think you're best at? Which actually is the thing that the that thing you, that drives me hmm. is the writing. Right. I am first and foremost a writer. But having said that, for me, directing is as much a component part of the writing as just the writing is. It, yeah. I mean, traditionally in theatre, recently, it's been there's been a very strong divide between writer and director as two separate jobs. It didn't always used to be like that. I mean, certainly Shakespeare would have done all his stuff, and mm. then in that there was actually a term called playmaker then because right. it combined the two. Uh, so actually, the, the you know, the idea of a director is fair, comparatively recent. It was kind of mm. back end of the 19th century. Um, and I learn a lot about writing through directing. Mm. And I learn a lot about directing through writing because mm. you're constantly, because the two are interacting all the time, you're constantly setting yourself challenges mm. in, in both fields. What can I do? How can I make that happen? Mm. I mean, there are times when I've written it and then I'm directing and I curse the writer. <laughs> Who wrote this? I've got this problem to solve. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's part of the fun of it, really. Sure. And also, sure. it's not all me. I'd like to say, John, yes, he does the music, but he does 
the bulk of the technical stuff. Right. On the latest show, we have Paul Nash who's come in. For me, I've just written five monologues in as part of the run of the, of the play. He's taken those five monologues away and created five completely separate worlds through okay. film. Right. Um, we've got people that design the costumes. We've got people that you know help with the set. Probably. So it's much more of a, it, it sounds like it's I'm a one woman band, but I'm not. It's very much a collaborative process. And for me, that is really important mm. because I would hate it if mm. all I had was my own imagination to play with. Mm. Because mm. actually, it's playing off each other's imagination that makes it so exciting, including the performances of the actors. Is Paul Nash the dance society guy? It is, yes. The, the self same. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, you're doing something at Coastable yes. and that's uh, what's that and when is it that's that's this Saturday which is Saturday the 11th <laughs> Saturday the 11th of February um, we're on in the concert room at Scarborough Library on Vernon Road right. and that's at one o'clock okay so you can get tickets on the door for that if mm -hmm. uh, from half past twelve uh, and then the following week we're in the same venue uh, we're on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night at 7.30. Right. So that's the 15th through to the 18th of right. February. And how much are tickets? Tickets are full price £9 and mm. concessions are £7. Cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And it's all the usual concessions. Right. Fabulous. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, good luck with that. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll obviously come along and see Yay! Good, 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 good. <laughs> and I might make you coffee in the interval. You oh never know. Oh, <laughs>